Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria War in which we're playing as a Jarldom of Chital, which I'm not sure what this nation's about, but uh, Seven shall enter. Seven deer of all stripes make up the Council of Seven, forged in the chaos of the Hindian anarchy of the early thousands, including Benjin himself. If Chito is to be reformed substantially before the end of the year, we must win the War of Influence within his, this body, and secure the loyalty of its kingmakers, or if all goes south, king breakers, but the ancestor. Peace in the east for only three days, and the Jarl is already ready to send me back to that heckish city once more. Jacob the Grey sighed and shook his head at all the news. Would that he would only tell me sooner, as if I was not some mastiff to obey and watch as he let our country be subverted by sweet-talking idealists and power-hungry southerns. Peace in the East? I would hardly call your mission anything but ceremonial, Jacob. As lieutenant, the young freed thrall turned officer Penshaw Rashanath. Rashanth. Turned and gave him a smile. It's clear the Jarl cares little for your advice. And why would he? He's too busy listening to you. Who's that new doe? Nissen? Nainsen? They try to hold me up as a progressive native officer. Ah, once. I remember how my approval to follow their every whim shook the Jarl's little clique. Jakob snored and let out yet another sigh as a carriage bumped along the western road to Ostkranby, his eyes glancing out of the window to open farms on plantations of Kanelempra. I've served in the courts of three Jarls, but our little nephew Ben seems more interested in disregarding my knowledge and lending his ears to weak-willed traitors. Jakob responded, progressive grow bolden and also does the axis. Would that he would take a lesson from his father and let me do what I do best. No doubt I would have them all fired within days at my nicest. That kind of talk would get you nowhere with him, Jakob, Pencha gave a cyber realm. You're a dying breed in Ostkranby, remember that. Your allies are all here, just waiting for you to strike. Not that the vultures encircling you are even remotely fit for advers adversary. 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 Advisory. Oh my goodness, my apologies. Jakob, or Jacob, gave a grimace and turned his gaze from outside himself. The haggard, frail, and tired, that was what the hero of Chittal had been reduced to. He knew he was dying, but the doctors, filled with fantasies of brutal vic vikingar, had all been too scared to give him the real diagnosis. Or diagnoses. A shame spending his last hours plotting a scheme, but if I could save Chital, it would be all worth it. Jacob the Grey would attempt to strengthen the Jarl's position in Chital. The influence of Jacob the Grey variable will represent traditional soft power, and if it's high enough, traditionalism will triumph. One must remain. The Chitali season of the early deal has begun, and with it, the Jarl must give an address opening the season, promising boons for the great farmers and artisans of Chital and restoration of the fractured nation's unity and pride. With the current political situation, though, his words might matter more than ever before, and the bureaucrat. Um, we have the National Spirit here, too. And then Axis of Chittal, which is not very good, I'd say. Not very good. Inland Neglect, which is not very good, either. The Bureaucrat, though. Benjen uh, Davertanin circled the factory once more, his eyes glancing from machine to machine, worker to worker, all liking one common purpose like cogs in a machine. Focused, efficient, but most almost unnatural. It been the ideal or cro crowning ideal, uh, the reign of Benjen IV to move into the Industrial Revolution as an equestrian the Griffonian Empire had, and it was the job of Davertanin to make sure every one of Benjen IV's reforms actually functioned as intended. And work he did each and every day to make sure Benjen V did not bear the public relations nightmare of an industrial accident, machinery collapse, or brutal injury to some young apprentice. Each death for us is another tool for Bushan to continue his anti-technological fury and continue to keep technology out of the South, Benjen IV had told his master of a faculty when he originally appointed Darvetanin to his position as overseer of Oskranbi industrial affairs decades ago. One accident. It caused a chain reaction that would tear the whole South apart in a fury. A fury you know would be directed against us and only us. The no truth of that, Daver, Daver Tanin knew. Although I could still not comprehend some of the sheer absurdity of the tactics of the Jackals and Chitali government, Benji IV had taught him much about the court, lessons that would translate to his rise to more and more powerful positions during the, the reign of the next two Jarls. Daver Tanin could not shake out the feeling as he walked over that he had made the wrong choices, that Jakob or Hier or even Hoversholm, his old ally, would someday devour him and crush the old bureaucrat under the spirit of New Age or Reform. There was anything he could do. He was to move on with his projects, make them as efficient as possible, and innovate into electronics, industry, or radar to make himself so vital to the spirit of Benjamin the Force modernizations. That'd be more than a politician or opportunistic reformer. Then the Vertanen would triumph and guide the Jarl through the age of wisdom and reason. A reformer's voice, but does Chital need another? Hey, more political power. So we have Eva. Eva. We have Benjamin smoking. We have Jakob the Grey. We have Ivar Hoversholm. We have Hira Ramnachan. And we have Bushan Grat, the heiress. A car rolled on through the afternoon rain as Ava's chauffeur drove away to the town council building, active as she was in both their local politics and the wider fair estate. Carlet, uh, her faithful, faithful political advisor, sat next to her as he flipped through some papers, reading and rereading the same paragraph over again. There's so much you do at the moment, we really don't have time for this type of local politics stuff, you know. Local politics uh, matter, Carlet. 
Ava replied, looking out of the window of the rain, helps us connect with the grassroots deer and find out where the problems lie within the nation. There's so many. Changes in coming, we need to have a killer path for Chito to follow. That, and it looks good to be seen mingling. In politics, appearances are everything. The Southern Jewel. As she was known, it was well aware that upheaval was coming. Benjamin was a ruler who didn't want to rule the council each to push their own agenda. Yeah, he would need a friend, all the friends he could get. We'll get this tidied up quickly and then head to Oskranby. We can't keep Benjamin waiting for too long. He'll miss me too much. She joked with a chuckle. So you should be reviewing the latest financial reports for any discrete. Already done this morning. They are big to say the least, but at least there's a lot of scope to boast economy if we can get her dear to work together and stop wasting their energies on fighting each other. She hopped briefly in frustration before gathering herself as a car pulled up in front of Towns Hall. Pass me the umbrella, would you dear? Can't turn up drenched now, can I? In every crisis, an opportunity. Honestly, I I don't really care which way we go, because there's, there's, it sounds like there's seven paths, but the chameleon. As Hera Evar Hovershaw made the trip to Oskranby with only a small retinue of Hamoholm Banner Deer, he considered new schemes, plots, and local nobles to align with, but most of all, his mind turned to his old failures. Years ago, he had the honor of sitting in the Jarl's inner circle and whispering in the ear of the most powerful deer in all of India, uh, and often as not. Benjamin would do what he wanted, for who could deny someone with the best interests of all Indians at heart? A hasty request for the position of chief minister, a denial, a violent reaction from Hovershom, and then an equally brutal one from the Jarl, though. Resigned that once so tangible power to nothing more than a historical footnote. Humiliation followed cries uh, of schemer and traitor and power-hungry usurper, but Hovershom could do little to defend himself, for all in the end it was true. When the council seven opened yet again, he found himself among the opposition, not as Ivar the reformer, nor Ivar the traitor, but is Ivar the chameleon, a humble member of the Axis of Chito, and a voice of passion, reason, and kindness to all in the court, and is a voice of snide and condescending disapproval behind their backs. Overshone preferred to think of this new persona not as one of contradictions, but one based only on simple bendings of the truth to further his own superior ideals, and the prosperity of all Chito as a result. Smiling, he recalled moments laughing off to the Axis to face off to the face of Benjamin, then plotting in shadow meetings with the same Kabadir, while all speaking fondly of the common traditionalist dear Jacob the Grey. If all went well this next session of the council, that friendly face to both the Jarl and the Axis would be Hovershom, and a simple change of pace could grant him the power to bring prosperity to Chito's children for generations. Utopia could bloom if it was only given the chance to secure it. More harmony, huh? Oh, the Axis influence variable will represent Hovershom and Ramachan's soft power. If it is too high, disaster will follow. The call is from Harihus. A uh, hundred letters sat on the carved wooden desk in front of her. Some were marked with stamps, others with wax, others with the small decals of arms and armor signifying stored noble homes or houses. Some were written in copied cursive letters, and others in incomprehensible scrawl, but also with a single phrase, Dearest Madame Hera. My tot has been called back into th thraldom, I swear to you, Madame, one show and it wrote in a shaky hoof. The boss says it's legal, he does, but the gold isn't there, it's just scraps of rice and maize and empty words. The boss is the Olenian wolves. They've been rounding up any able deer they can find to work in the big plantations, and the two are doing too much to see that it all get at once. Were the words of another plea, and the others spelled even grimmer circumstances, then the economic exploitations were common in her old homestead, of Harihus and the surrounding five times of the south. The wolves came and burned the temple here, ran out of uh, the two ya with their long rifles and searched the homes for the leader of the assault on that caravan ran through here a couple weeks ago, wrote another, while the author, author of The Scene of the Caravan is anything but convincing. The jackals burned their own crates and killed their own deer to root out the free brothers of the Tuya here. Well, madame, if you will me. I think we ought to start again here. Start sacking those caravans for real. The consequence has gone be the same. Clearly had another opinion in mind. So much anger, so much hatred. So much blood on the south, yet Benjen, Davirtanen, Yakov, even Ivar were oblivious to it all. How could they not be when it was in their very best interest to do so? The strong could play the games of reform and reaction, of, of progressivism in the urban strongholds, debate measures of Sambar and Doli and Makawia, yet all while her old home suffer for it. If all goes well, Bushan uh, shall set the plans in motion. Here I thought I should set the last of the pleas for aid aside, and I've had some tricks up my sleeve as well. Well, we'll see. No guarantees, of course. But like I said, we will see. So then she'll enter. We shall have a few more, right? Or maybe not. Baptism of the Pier. The bearded deer repeated the mantra to himself once more, the guiding words and principles of Mahatma and their tu mai, mai yuan tu. And may I never again slip into the follies of the will of the mind, Bushan uh, Gurat murmured, for the laws of Mahatma triumphed over the petty desires of mortal deer. He emerged from the great crimson curtain to behold the greatest gathering of Mahatmasts he had seen in Oskranbi, the, the city of thieves, in some time. Hundreds and a thousand of deer sat together on great woven rugs, displaying scenes of the glorious fall of Bushan the Liberator, the first leader of the Tuya, at the hooves of the faceless Viking hordes. The gaze up from the ground to meet his gaze, utter devotion and reverence in their faces, their eyes consumed by fire. Bushan took his place in front of them, clad only in threadbare robes. I noticed that there are many new pilgrims among us. He finally spoke, raising a hoof and nodding. Let us instruct them of the commitments of her will, of the knowledge of the way temporal and the spiritual and the doctrine of saint soldiers of the Tuya. The mass of deer turned beside them to their little sacred rolls, scrolls, and the new recruits followed. Peace, Bouchon thought, let me keep calm, remember the words, ponder on the teachings, as the ranks of the saint soldiers, and the 
other two yaks yet expand. The force of the people shall grow with it, and in their greatest hour crush these Olinian oppressors, these servants of the mind of impulse. It was impulse that brought them here, these barbarians from the frozen shores, base impulses for gold, blood, and power. Of the material world in all its riches, but never the world of spirit, never that of the charity or contentment. Now the gluttony of the highest order of lust more and more and more until finally Mahatma screamed enough, and the pure remember their con conscience. Remember the teachings of the goddess when the scriptures have been torn away from them. Their value is broken by the black idols of the wicked pantheon. Bouchon pulled a double-edged sword, a short sword, and a bowl of sanctified nectar from his belt and held them atop for his adoring followers of old. If you were to remember your conscience again, drink in the nectar of Mahatma, the lifeblood of the Indian, or, uh, stir up by the sword of the eternal struggle, and rise again a soldier of her to Mayanatu. And then comes a new hundred faithful. Nice. The Jarl. The Jarl of Benjamin stood up upon the white tower of Oskranimbin and looked out upon his lands and his people. He breathed in the crisp morning air as the sun rose over the horizon towards the vast forest in the east. Below him, he could hear the Gaudi chanting their morning dedications to Uko and the other gods, though behind him he heard bustling through his palace. This was the bustling of his many native servants throughout the castle, and he could hear them saying their dedication to, the ser to their own mother goddess. This is the duality of Chito, Benjin said to himself. This day, like all others, I will have much ahead of me. Walking up to the west balcony, Benjin felt the presence of the Saitseman Seli of uh, the council hall where he would hear court later that morning. And as he peered, Benjamin could just make out the carriage of Hira Ramachan, the schemer. Today, he would stare down and resist the forces of Arrakis for the good of all Chitali. The wind blew thick today, ruffling the Jarl's cloak and bringing a serene calm to his mind. Your Highness, Benjamin rolled around, being awoken from his state of focus. Your Highness, your breakfast, Benjamin smiled. Thank you, Sir Vima. The maid bowed, shallowly and departed, leaving Benjamin to his Canelli tea. Your Highness, the maid again, what does she need? Benjamin turned again, careful not to spill his cup. When he saw who it was, he smiled the same he did every day when he saw his love. My dear Rusu, you become more beautiful whenever I see you. Rusu snickered. Well, you see me quite a bit, Ben. I must be quite pretty then. Instead of responding with words, Benjamin said, hugged her tightly. I need to go before the council here today. Uh, uh, again. Benjamin pulled himself back from the embrace. Here is already here. Today I will not be friendly. There's nothing that Doe can do to you, my dear. You shall always endure, and I will always stand with you. Thank you, Rusu. Today is a new opportunity for me and Chital. Well, we'll see. Seven shall enter. One must remain. A Jarl's inspiration, or reputation, oh, reopen the Benjamin the Fourth Industrial Bureau. Lose 15% political power. Holy crap. That's a lot. Opening the Moon Pony season. It's not bad either. Dealing with the council. The council itself was created to calm the concerns of native nobility, but the successes have been mixed. While well, it's improved native conditions over the years of its existence, many have come to realize it exists just to support the Jarl's power. God's going to lose their faith in its authority. And now, if factions have taken hold, Benji needs to make a difficult decision regarding its future. Are you seriously going to deliver this dribble of an evening do address to your cabinet about those fawnhood fantasies of yours? Have you learned nothing from our last heart to heart, Benjamin? The elderly stag sighed and shook his head. In disappointment of the Jarl, the weight of his own wrinkles and battle scars only helping to accentuate his evident frown. It was only ironically fitting to have journeyed all the way to Oskranbi from Gaudiriana for the bi monthly crown speech after having conducted a review of its garrison troops only to witness the Jarl's very own nephew once again gush about his ludicrous ideas of harmony of the masses and reform of the classes, for Chito, he thought to himself. Dribble, fall into the fantasies. Uncle Jacob, you must understand the gravity of the situation I hoof here. Benjamin replied with a huff of annoyance. The dark bag under his eyes betraying his lack of sleep and patience, and after a night of writing and rehearsal, the Earl done his entire state of affairs, and it's clear that we can no longer be, uh, present our backs to the Hendrians and their needs. We must intervene and provide bread for the poor and a voice of the... And abode on those wannabe rebels in the inland with your bleeding heart ideas, Jakob interrupted in his rough voice. Benjamin, your father, would have brought the axe to them to strike them down, and so would his father before him. That speech of yours simply will add logs to the fire, but we're not to affirm our commitment to strength, tradition, and national integrity. Benjamin sighed, looking down at the paper he had spent all night painstakingly writing in his hoof. Jakob had always been rigid as a stone in his beliefs. While the needs of his subjects could no longer be ignored, perhaps his uncle was right about Chittle's past speaking for itself. He then lifted his head and said, Give me quill and inkwell, uh, uncle. Must be truly reformed, Benjamin. Um. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll be able to bend you. No, no, we'll see. So now we're at twenty-eight percent. Oh no! Hoof holding hoof. As Benji entered the council chambers, he felt the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. A familiar sensation, but one had felt or tried to avoid for most of his life till now. It sat uneasy, unfamiliar, more often than not, unwelcome. But today, today was different. He had a task ahead of him, to which he had fixed his purpose, and for perhaps the first time in his life, he welcomed the responsibility for it, gave him a chance to do something worthwhile. Taking his place at the head of the councillor's table, he greeted each of them in turn. Avon da Vertanen smiled warmly, accepting his welcome. Jakob not uh, curtly, refusing to meet his eyes. He had returned his greeting with a watchful thoughtfulness she was known for. Ivar looked eager to rise and give a greeting of his own, but the deer was smart enough to know that right belonged to Benjamin. 
Hushan accepted the greeting with a nod, ever the warrior monk ready for the fight. Taking a breath to say to himself, Benjamin, the fifth of his name, BM. Counselors. It's good to see you all again. I've been giving them my current state of Chito a great deal of thought since our last meeting, and I'm now ready to share with you my now great new design. The harmony of the masses. Chito has been divided for too long, and while struggling against its own confused identity, hostility has festered. Their dear do not feel welcome in our nation. Bouchon grunted an acknowledgement. This is all going to change. It's time we throw open the doors and make every deer feel that they have a home here. We we'll accept here and be welcome for who they are. A massive reform is needed. A reform of the class is a reform of the economy. I need each voice round this table to help me in this, for your opinions and views on this matter are unique. You each see the problems in a different way, and if we're here to the voices, if we're here to, to hear the voices of our new dear, we must first hear the voices of each other. So let us listen, let us try to understand, and start making Chito a better place for all of us. Finishing. With a smile, Benjamin regarded his fellow counselors once again. The the Virtanen. Look, Prawa Eva certainly seemed to approve of the message. Heroes appeared relaxed and happy. Ivar stomped a soup in agreement. Even Bouchon looked interested, one eyebrow raised quizzically as he returned to Benjamin's gaze. The only one round the table who appeared downcast was Jakob, who looked more, even more annoyed than before. The old soldier raised his hand and spoke. Could you get any sappier? A meeting with the three. Benjamin is a year to fix the problems facing Chito by the next Munpani season. Clearly, they did not let the access to Chito levy their influence over the Council 7 at any point now or in that time. To rectify the issue of access influence in the council, Benjamin shall call a meeting for only three of his most trusted advisors, so that he shall only listen to the sound policy and rhetoric. The state of the seven. Benjamin the fifth, relaxing in the chair on the balcony overlooking the seat. His shoulders sagging into the weariness of the day, arguments among the council turned to what was meant to be a half hour meeting into a two hour one. The smallest details on uh, the word choices caused flare ups, it didn't matter that they were all saying the same thing in two different ways to them. It was like they wanted a fight, going into the meeting expecting conflict, just like yesterday and the day before. A non stop loop of infighting stuck on repeat over and over again. He needed to find something to unite them, to put them on the same page, but that was another problem in half the time. They knew what needed to be done and agreed upon the goals, but the path to those goals was where the issues always spawned the devil in the details. He never seen Deer argue so much while all agreeing with each other. Sometimes he wished he could just leave his royal duties behind and the ride waves, ride the waves instead. God, I hate politics, he groaned. How are you holding up? Well, Rusu asked, setting a glass of water on the table next to him. He took a deep breath of the evening air and steadied himself. Oh man, if you finally, uh, finally finalize the agreement of equal education rights, so that's something at least, even if it did take all afternoon. His beloved Rusu looked at Benjamin with concern. He'd been working too hard recently. How would we go away for the weekend, just the two of us? No late night meetings, no reviewing documents or issuing statements. A little relaxing getaway will do you a world of good. You're all brightened. Uh, just imagining such a trip. Desperately wishing he could take her up on the offer. What would it be without you? He sighed while laying his head on her shoulder. Probably another council meeting, she chuckled. So tell me, how was the council this time? Unstable, but uh, beneficial. What do we have here? Promise representation? What if I did nothing? Indian Wars. Tensions are an all-time high in the Indian region, with free natives, governments, poised to strike at the Olenian invaders. And likewise, the Olenian invaders are ready to retake the entirety of the old Deer Law. The war is inevitable. The only question is when it will happen, who will inevitably triumph? The banner of the Indians or that of the old Sea Kings? pro Olenian block. Ignite the war proclamation. Let's go ahead and end the uprisings. Show the skyfall. Everything's pretty awesome. A console for four. They cannot be trusted. Uh, Jakob slammed and swooped down on the table. Why? They're even on the council I can understand, forming into their own little three-deer team, calling themselves the Axis, are conniving, scheming, and paranoid. Of course they're paranoid. We're plotting against them. We meet without them to take decisions that affect them, or pro their provinces, and their deer. Are we really so thick-headed that you can't see why they're annoyed, why they feel they need to band together just like we have? And you've returned a salvo of own from the other end of the table. Perhaps if they showed a little bit more gratitude for the positions, they'd be included more. Their loyalty and duty should be the chittal. They should be honored to be allowed to speak, not grumbling about the complaints being ignored. Look at Davir Tanin. He wouldn't go about sneaking and plotting, would he? Don't drag me into this, the industrialist responded from his chair. The attempts to remain out of their argument clearly hadn't worked. Enough, Benjamin shouted. Enough of this, both of you. I will not listen to any more of your bickering. Go, you both need to cool off. Ava and Jacob I sat motionless, staring death at each other. Go now. The force of his demand shook both of them from their feud. Pausing only to bow to Benjamin on the way out, the two stormed from the room, slamming doors as they went. Well, that was he to bench inside, head and hooves. Thanks to all that, I forgot about what we were discussing. What was the meeting even meant to be about? The reforms, Jarl, Davertinen offered. Ah, oh, yes, your proposed reforms, Benjamin visibly brightened. Well, I'm sure we can handle those on our own. We've agreed on most of the points anyway, it's correct. Indeed we do, Jarl. Shall we begin? An excellent agenda, but a new red, a new face. Not a red face, but a new face. Uh, currently, Benjamin lacks a comfortable power base where matters in Chitali politics. Appointing a new advisor to court the favor of one of the many factions, Chitto will sure for support in a crucial ways. Well, the question remains is that who's to his appoint for such an important task? It looks like we we're ready to raid. The divisions are not that good. Any more stability. Pragmatists. Wow, you lose a lot of pony power. Well, that's weekly pony power. It's not terrible, but I don't know, I'm just gonna leave it there. We'll see what happens. Oh, uh, y'all's reputation. 
Our hero is known as a kind and timid figure throughout all of Chittle and beyond. While his personality meshes well with the reform movements, Avadis like Jakob the Great are also less than happy about his dissimilarity to his father, Benjamin IV. Perhaps it's time for the hero to try and change. Farbook declare war on Farbook. Good job, Farbook. Oh, no, I just want to keep my peepee. -pee. The joys of the red tape. Revoking the 1994. 994 statute, which replaced the 1983 statute on allowances given to the members within the local authority or granted their positions with the 998 elections. This is to, in effect, reverse or revert the allowances to the 975 standard, which, allowing for inflation, requires updating to. The financial advisor was cut off by a loud bang as Benjamin said slipped from his hoof and collided with the table, a snoring immediately ceasing before he shot bolt up right, throbbing his forehead. Ah, you nearly broken antler, you see. Why do I just sit here all listen to this pleading, piddling nonsense? There must be some dear else that can do this too. I'm sorry, y'all, but most of the government is paperwork, as well as, as well as you well know. Wait, didn't Hira say something yesterday that we should be expanding support for the council? I remember it being on the agenda. Yeah, I'd have made it if I remember correctly, Yarrow. The proposal to hire an advisor to support council business and alleviate the administrative burden. Yeah, let's do the boring jobs. Do the boring job. Let's do that. Let's do that instead of this. Very well, Jarl. The advisor reached for a briefcase he had with them and pulled out four different folders, each with a picture of a deer attached. There are four candidates. First is Katarina, Oliver Shaw, and Mivar's sister. A bit hasty in idealism, but ideologically she is much closer to and works better with Darvit Hanim. Next is Ifri Hudarnin, a general old friend of Jacob's. He wouldn't necessarily know what to expect of him, even if he was a bit more nationalistic than one would expect of an advisor. Then there's Karl Samara, recommended by Ava. She's got a bit more of a grand view on these matters, but a bit of experience in serving a government figure. Finally, there is Marsha Gura, Bushan's sister. As a suggestion to support the council originally came from Hira, she also proposed and supports this candidate. I was certainly place the plank of the axis, although Marsha is not exactly a supporter of the Yarl, I want to go with whoever has the lowest stuff. Abrasive popularity. Or progressivism. Nationalistic fervor. You lose political power, which I don't like. Yeah, I want you to do them. We're going to try to send Marsha Goratin. He was even more political power. Wow. Oh, they only 22%. I'll go with that one for now. Alright, and Silent Rook Deer. I like Silent Rook Deers. Rumbling in the jungle. There have been uh, recent rumors of the growing discontent in the southern provinces that has begun to cause concern. There seems to be some communist agitator working in the region to stir up trouble among the native population. While well, still in the early stages, we should act to stop it before it starts. 300%, huh? Axis. Reaches over 50% support, they may take control of the council if they reach over 50% tension. They may attempt to seize power by force, either way, there will be dire consequences for the king. Or kind Viking. Getting me. Just lift your head a little higher, please, thank you. The light from the high window casts Benjamin the Fifth in a dashing figure. A cloak casts loosely around his shoulders and draped over his flank. The strong muscles of his barrel flexing into their details, antlers high and the noble born upon those broad shoulders, that strong jaw, that firm brow, the very figure of real po regal power. At least that's what the portrait portrayed. The reality was somewhat different. His neck hurt from posing, his back ached from standing all morning. The cloak was heavy and hot, and he just wanted to sit down and have a cup of tea. The whole thing was a farce, but he could hear Jacob's word echoing in his ears. A royal procession will require a royal portrait. Finished, Jacob asked as he entered the room. Just about. The artist painted one last stroke with a flourish. There we are. You're all tell me what you think. Benjamin sagged, a sigh of relief sipping out as he stepped off the dies, letting his cloak fall to the floor as the back creaked like a rusty cement mixer as he came to stand next to Jakob and view the portrait. The old soldier looked very pleased, Benjamin not so much. It doesn't look like a thing like me. Jakob scoffed, that's the point. It's not about what you look like, it's about what you can become, the making of a new deer. An image should be passed around and spiral the for the future as it proceeds to the process. I look like a fool from here to Coltake. Benjamin the fake, Benjamin the fraud, painted the king. Benjamin stared at Jakob in shock, the color fading from his face. His uncle seemed to brush off his concerns with the wave of the hoof. That's the wrong attitude to take. See this as your potential, your future. Set your mind to it, and to become the figure of strength you'll see here. Jakob slapped him on the shoulder. I will not sacrifice my dignity for good press. Ooh. Ooh, pitiful Vazikos. Are you kidding me right now? Or perhaps it's time for the king, kind Viking, to change. Um. Daily harmony support goes down. Ooh, we're putting more pitiful power here. Ooh. I'll do that one. I summit with a gaudy. Traditional Lydian Gaudi still hold, high, still hold positions of high importance at the court of Jarl, but their presence has been a subject to debate for a long time now. Their influence is upsetting to our native subjects. And the close ties of Jakob the Great's traditionalist faction worries many of the minor nobility, who fear the power will be threatened. It is time to finally decide, once and for all, the role of the Holy Deer. I like the conflict. News from the South, of course. I mean, just six? Nah. Ava hey, poured over the reports, a concern growing with every new page, paragraph, and sentence. Uh, what started out as a minor incident in the corner of the Yarl of them was growing into a really real threat of communist uprising across several provinces. 
A figurehead had started to appear, a single deer named Danya Shah. She managed to turn a hoofful of discontent farmers into the beginnings of a militia that was at risk of doing considerable damage. Reports of a blown train lines and a kidnapping had arrived in the capital. The fragile economy of the South was already at risk, and so her advice had been requested. But despite her expertise, she simply couldn't understand it. They hadn't issued any demands, made any statements about their intent other than to call themselves communists, and generally acted more like a gang than a, than a political army. They arrived in a region, and Daniel would give a few speeches, rally some support, then they'd be sabotaging something and move on. Round and round the provinces they went, Mahorna, Hardahus, and Gondirana had suffered, but worse still was the implications of the tactic. Keeping a momentum like that required more than just charisma and drive, it required money. Some outside agency was fomenting this unrest, providing them with funding and equipment. She was sure of it. With the current supply shortages of the army, every gun and bullet was tracked and accounted for, meaning the weapons had to be coming from somewhere else. The Dolly uh, Confederation was a possible source, considering they'd welcome a chance to disable the Yarldom. Or perhaps it was Sambar, their border disputes went back a long way. There had to be someone who knew something about this. Perhaps Carlet uh, Samara, their steward and confidant, could help. But with his ear on the ground, Hero was also sure to have some information about what was going on, and with her help, they could get to the bottom of the issue. It would also be nice just to reach out between the council members for support. Either way, this needs to get fixed and fast. This certainly is worse than we thought. An access connection. During our efforts to deal with the communist hotbed that is the South, we discovered several documents and correspondence leaks that growing issues with access. We're not sure the authenticity or what the real connection is, but it might be worth digging into. Nice. No, I just don't want to do any of these. I just want to see what happens. Alinian, Indian. Be offensive? Okay. I'm meeting with a Gadi. Tell me, Jarl, uh, Jarl, when was the last time you listened to the gods? The old Gadi walked out of Benjamin's side. The air was blessedly crisp and warm this evening. Sun setting behind the white towers, they strolled through the grounds. Prayer is not really my thing, Kolnar, Benjamin replied with a placating tone. Kolnar chuckled, his crown of raven feathers rustling against his antlers. Nor is it his mind, but that's not what I asked. Those who rule above us will do what they will, pray or no prayer, but when was the last time you listened and sat and heard what they had to say? I, I don't follow, Benjamin stopped. Confusion written across his face. His, he turned his full attention to Kolnar. Well, think of it like this. Every deer wants something, even the gods, but sifting through their nonsense and hyperbole to hear what they're really saying, that's a trick. Benjamin laughed. Now you're making them sound like politicians. Now you're hearing my truth, he smiled. Glancing at the old soldier, you saw Katharina, Ivar's sister, sitting across the gardens towards the tower. She smiled and waved at them as she went. Kolnar turned the gesture. Do you listen to the truth the gods are saying? Do you grasp what they want? Benjamin watched Katharina as she went. I think so. I just can't decide who to listen to. I'm not here to tell you what's important. I'm not a missionary. I just want you to ask yourself what's most important to you. I can make these decisions for you, but the wisdom of the god is yours, should you wish it. All I ask is that you hear, some, we ha hear what we have to say. Indeed, the wisdom of the god shall always be heeded. Three more tension. No, it cannot be seen to favor one religious group over the other. That's boring. Um, Jakob will get more influence. But I do want to get more influence. I kind of want lower tension, though. 29%, 32%, it's quite a bit. Dealing with the uh, Tumayanatu? For hundreds of years, a native religious sect known as the Tuya have existed on the political fringe of the Chittal. In the trying times, the Tuya's charitable actions, as well as his militant defiance of the regime, has attracted new members. Most dangerously, Bushan the Brash, who himself is in here, must have addressed what to do about this movement in fast, looking a little deeper. Setting his death deep within the citadel of the White Tower, Benjamin lit a candle. Its warm light soothed the stress he felt as he held the letter in his tubes. It bore the cherry wax seal of Danya Shah, a letter just barely intercepted by his loyal servants before it could reach its intended destination. He could only hope it would contain something that would help bring peace to the realm. Open the document and began to read, Through the shadow of Chitto, you're close to letting your ego get the better of you. I caution you not to not probe me for any further action unless you put your efforts at risk. Though I'm thankful for the shipment of weapons, the Jarl came to me close to finding them. We'll control the south soon enough and remove the kind Viking, but when the day is passed, we'll need to work out the finer points of this partnership, otherwise the revolution will not stop with the dynasty of Benjamin. Best wishes, Danya Shah. Benjamin blinked a few times and wrote through the letter again. Who in the right mind would write something like this? And its core is a letter to an ally, but why the veiled threats? And the shadow of Chittal talk made Benjamin nervous, though at the same time he could not help but chuckle at what it, he read. It was truly a unique specimen. But the real question was, who was this too? Who was providing weapons to the rebels? Wait, the shadow of Chittal? Could it be Hero? Benjamin wondered to himself. Turning to the bed, turning to the bed in his study beside him, he spoke to the doe sleeping beneath the sheets. Odusu, my dear, could you fetch me a member of the royal police? The only response from the bed were dreaming groans. It seems I will need to do this myself, Benjamin thought, but is it worth the risk? Investigation will be superfluous. The access has no connection. I must take action. We lose 75 political power. Wow, that's a lot. That 
is quite a bit. Um, we don't want some army XP. It has to be at least 0 0.09 though. Planning speed is kind of a waste, but everything else is not really very worthwhile, so. Reopen the uh, Benjamin the Fourth Industrial Bureau. Recent developments in Chito have alerted us to the reforms of Benjamin the Fourth, the father of Yarls Ahato and Benjamin the Fifth. So any massive overalls to complete their intended goals. Leftovers. From the lack of abolishment of the Thraldrum and incomplete urbanization must be addressed, of course. Yeah, we're really behind technologically, it's really bad here. Like it's really, really freaking bad. The Bouchon's proposal. The council chamber emptied out uh, Dervantanen was having a quiet word of the Ivar as they departed. Haggling over tariff rates, no doubt. Benjamin gathered his paper, satisfied with another meeting. The things, be, seem, things seem to be getting easier uh, these days. It seemed that he'd really gotten his hooves on managing each session now. Benjamin, may I have a word? Bouchon stood at the Jarl's shoulder, his expression the standard of difference that gave little indication to anything. Certainly, Benjamin responded, though can it be quick, I have dinner arrangements. The Ural placed his papers in the saddlebag. The two my young not too. Benjamin sighed and bowed his head. Bouchon was being straight to the point as usual. Legitimize them. It was a statement, not a request. Bouchon, you know we can't. It is to your benefit. They would supplement the army and help keep the peace in the provinces. It would not help public stability to give a bunch of armed monks, monks military authority. That's clearly a conflict of interest. You heard the her, you're the head of that order, are you not? Bouchon did not seem dissuaded by Yarl's continuous protests. That matters little. They would be placed under the instruction of the council. You cannot deny their usefulness. I'm not denying anything, Benjamin pressed. I'm merely saying that legitimizing the Latuya would cause disruptions we cannot afford. Yarl, I believe you are mistaken. I will cease disruption in the long term by increasing our reach, implicating a group which would otherwise feel excluded and victimized. Even you must see the benefits of keeping peace. Be politely expedient. I don't want any more tension. Um... Lose attention, lose attention. And then, cutting some of the roots. Mm, that's better, probably. I'm kind of going to go with commonly southern roots. Our economy should remain rooted in the plantations and agriculture of our south, so, say, southern nobles and socialite was still commonly. Commonly. We put as many useful things like tea, rubber, and spices there, and exporting these goods will surely bring us prosperity, but unfortunately, that's literally all the time I have for today, because it's been a long day at the time of this recording. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video so far, Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, where we'll figure out which direction we're really going to go. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.